agents, Agent KCG here, and today we are gonna be talking about real estate photography and how to set up your camera every step of the way. This video will have chapters, so if you're wondering how to capture a bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, skip to those chapters, and these are the steps I take when I'm taking the photos. First of all, your tripod. You need to have a really good tripod, especially one that gets up at least six feet. I'm six foot four. This one is just about my height. I can barely see when I'm on my tippy toes. Make sure everything's level. For the front elevation, I always go as high as possible. I get the house in the center of the shot. And then I try to get any side gate over to there. Nothing extra, just this angled shot. Then the same thing directly in front of the house. I get from side to side, get as close as I can while still getting the front of the sidewalk, the driveway in the shot. In this shot, you wanna get more house than you do sky. So don't blow it up like this. You're gonna be more like that. And then the same thing on this side of the house, I'm making sure to get that whole RV gate to that side of the house, center of the frame and take the picture. Now the next two shots is I'm gonna come in close and just squeeze the edges of the house into the frame. Not gonna worry about the driveway showing the landscape. I'm just gonna put the main house into the shot and then I come up to the front door, get a shot of that. If I can, I put the uh, address, street numbers from the house in that shot as well. And you notice I went down to about five and a half foot height uh, for these outside shots. You kinda wanna center the height of the ceiling to the ground right there. When you get into the house, make sure all the lights are on, fans are off, and any blind shades are open. Something else clients will love you for is to make the faucet straight. Uh, double check there's no under the cabinet lights and microwave light or oven light turned on on as well. All the little details, I love it. Stick around till the end. I will share with you my camera settings, the lens I use, camera I use. I will show you every detail and the settings I use 99.9% .9 of the time if I'm doing a $50,000 trailer mobile home or a $10 million home in Paradise Valley. I'm using the same settings, same camera, same lens. All right, first we're gonna go, when I take the first shot, it's always at the front door, but I wanted to show you this. The perfect setting for a camera height is a lens just at the cabinet, under the cabinet, so you don't see below the cabinet and it's not above. You want this setting throughout the house. Now these cabinets are actually a little bit higher than normal. Usually they're around here, and this is my normal setting just under my chest height but I'm six foot four so depending on your height it could look like this or like that like this or like that so good judgment good idea is to do your height right here but like I said these cabinets are higher than most but you want to just raise your camera just enough so it's like that not up above you want to see the bottom of them you want to be right there so when I'm in the kitchen, I'm going to have it at this height, taking the pictures in here. But when I'm in the rest of the rest of the house, I'm actually going to lower it to my usual height. The very first thing, even though it might not be a great shot, the very first thing is to stand by the front door, get your camera at that camera height, and then take the picture facing the entrance, the view that you get when you come in. Then I put the camera in what I like to call the corner position. So I put a foot as far as I can into a corner, creating this natural corner. And then I get that lens corner to corner, making sure I don't cut any of that fireplace off. All right, so since there's no furniture in here, you still want to get some head-on shots, straight-on shots. And because they have a fireplace and the patio door. I'm going to get the shot straight on this way. So I'll take the three shots. Then I'm going to go to the opposite corner that I was just at to take this shot as well. And then while I'm here, don't be scared to turn your camera on the side of that vertical shot. And then of course you get to the opposite side 
and you want to show where the entrance is coming into the room fireplace on that side to that corner pretty simple straightforward okay so basically the theme of the whole house is to stay in the corners get in the corner of every room take shots if there's a dining table peninsula you get different angles so i'll continue on and then when there's not a corner shot something different i'll show you what it looks like so with the peninsula or an island i get every corner that i can so I get this shot, corner of the peninsula showing there. And always do as many shots in the kitchen as you can. I'm gonna get this full length, get in the oven in there, try not to cut off anything, plus part of the island there. So this shot right here, I'm standing in the corner of the kitchen. I am making sure I don't cut off this window and I don't cut off that window. So I'm getting this angle right here, picture, picture. And then I move over to this corner. I was just there. And now on this one, you got a giant fridge right here, but nice open space. So I'm gonna focus on getting that corner in the shot and then not worry too much about the fridge. So I'll probably just do half the fridge. So the shot will end up looking something like that instead of like that. See the big difference there? Fridge, part of the fridge. And then another head-on shot. And the last one for this kitchen, gonna get this area, this area here, and I might even do a close-up of that backsplash. Okay, a couple things in the bathroom. You want to make sure the toilet seat is down. That is number one priority. Number two is move any toilet paper, anything that you see, remove that. Lights on, if the curtain is closed, open the curtain, take the shot both ways with open and close. Then once everything is ready, make sure everything is straight, actually. So you're gonna be coming in here, taking a picture, corner to that corner, and we don't really see the lights, and they're actually decent lights, so what I'll do, I'll flip the camera on its side, so I get this whole angle with the lights in there. And the same with the shower, since it's tub to ceiling tile. Flip the camera over so they can see the entire shower. So this is the same with every bedroom. At the entrance, I put the camera as far into this corner as I can, and basically go corner to whatever I end up getting to over here. Sometimes it's corner to corner. Now I always go to the opposite corner. Every room, every bedroom gets at least two shots. Master gets more. And I always close the closets unless there's a nice organizer or something behind that door. So basically you show that this room has a closet. You get in the corner and take this shot. So now we're getting to laundry room and hallways. So I'm gonna set the camera so the lens just past this hallway entrance Take this picture with the door closed. Then I'm gonna take the picture with the door open. Make sure all the lights are on. That way people know where they're at. Now the master or primary bedroom as they're now calling it, usually takes more than two photos. Sometimes not because it's not that exciting. This one is gonna be a three shot master bathroom bedroom. Uh, first shot from the door corner as always, second shot from the opposite corner. This one happens to be where a closet is, but we're still going to shoot it. But one of my shots always is, includes the door going back into the hall and the bathroom or the bathroom in the shot. And in this case, this one shot, I'm going to get the shot going out to the patio, door into the hall and to the bathroom. In the last master shot, just do a head-on shot to that patio door. Now this is a good example of a not a lot of space to get a picture of the sinks, double sinks, nice cabinet, lights, two mirrors, all that. You wanna get all that in one shot. Now I'm gonna take this shot up close and personal, but I'm also gonna put the camera here. But when I do that, I'm still not gonna get the full cabinets or the lights. So what I'll do also 
Now, even though I turned it on its side, I still can't get the whole shot by putting it there. So I'm bringing, them at, bringing it out so I can get that whole floor to ceiling shot. And I'm doing the same thing for the shower because this shower room is so small. I'm gonna get as little bit as the, of the toilet as possible. And with the garage, it's pretty much the same theory. Stand in a corner to take a picture. This one, I'm gonna take one this way. Then I'm gonna step in and take a head on shot. I'll probably just stand right in the middle, face this way to take that shot. So when you come out, you wanna take the shot that you see coming out of the patio door. So set up the camera straight, take this shot. And then I stand in that corner, take a shot. I stand in that corner, take a shot. I make sure that I get that window in the shot, get the slider in the shot. Then there's that patio I'm gonna go take a picture of. I'll get a picture of this one. So basically, if you stand in corners, you got yourself covered. Once you get those corner shots, then you can move on to straight shots of a pool, straight shots of a grass area. And if you can, get a tree, a bush, or in this case, a cactus in the shot. All right, that was this house, pretty short and simple. If you have any questions, comment below. If you found it useful, like, subscribe. It's more helpful than you can imagine. We're almost at 5,000 subscribers. And as promised, here are my camera settings. And Canon cameras, it's the, the C1 is my settings that I always go to when I'm taking real estate photos. So I set all this up and then all I have to do is turn my dial to C1 right there and then everything is the way I want it, ready to go for photos. So the three main things is the ISO is always at 100. My aperture is manually set on the lens. It is F10. I always leave it there and my shutter speed, I let the camera choose that, it's on auto because you're moving from brighter and darker, moving from bright parts of the house to darker parts of the house, inside, outside, letting the camera choose the aperture is the best option there. And I am using the Canon 90D. It is a 1.6 crop sensor. So my 10 millimeter Rokinon is actually equal to a 16 millimeter. But the reason I love this lens is because it has the infinity focus. So I always leave it on that and everything is in focus. Everything works out every time. If I only needed one camera, one lens, and one tripod, the Manfrotto tripod, this is what I would bring to every job forever because this is what I use 99% of the time.